so in this video we'll be discussing the alpha 2 agonist now the most important alpha 2 agonist we all know is chlorine uh, just before that I'd like to uh, mention a small point that is uh, due to alpha 2 agonistic action there is central sympatholysis okay so there is decreased norepinephrine release in presynaptic neurons particularly due to alpha 2 a agonistic action okay so yeah please remember this next we move on to the drugs and the most important clonidine now clonidine is the most important alpha 2 agonist and you have to remember a lot of things about it the first thing is that clonidine is primarily used as a second line drug for treatment of hypertension is on a first line is a second line drug oral clonidine is the drug of choice for hypertensive urgency and I hope you remember the difference between hypertensive urgency and emergency is a drug of choice for hypertensive urgency and is also the drug of choice for ticks associated with Tourette syndrome do you remember the pathophysiology of Tourette syndrome yes please go back to your neuroanatomy books and search it it's there there is actually um, transient ischemia in certain parts of the cerebral cortex which le leads to the ticks yeah so oral clonidine is the drug of choice for hypertensive uh, urgency sorry and ticks associated with Tourette syndrome now it has also found new uses uh, one of the uh, more uh, surprising ones is that it is used in diarrhea associated with diabetes mellitus and its mechanism of action is that it decreases chloride and water secretion it is also used one of the drugs used for the prophylaxis of migraine though not preferred as much may be used it is used for the treatment of ADHD ADHD in ADHD any decrease that is norepinephrine decrease causes decrease CNS stimulation ADHD is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder okay then it can also be used for the treatment of alcohol smoking and opioid dependence it can also be given by transdermal route for the treatment of post menopausal hot 
flashes. And it can also be given as a pre-anesthetic medication. And used for conscious sedation in nice use. It can also be given as an analgesic. In cancer patients. And it can also be used for the diagnosis of Theo Homo Cytoma. And in case of uh, side effects, common side effects which can which we can observe with clonidine are dry mouth. Then there is importance and clonidine withdrawal hypertension. And I hope you remember what is the drug of choice for clonidine withdrawal hypertension. If you don't, please go back and revise. The next drug we should, which we should discuss is dexmedetomidine. Yes, uh, it is also a pre-anesthetic medication. And it's a very useful drug as it is, uh, it has sedative action as well. It causes sedation, it causes anxiolysis, analgesia. and decreased secretions so this is a very uh, useful drug and uh, for your exams are uh, not that much important but again uh, for your viva exams if you are answering well uh, it may be asked the next drugs there are, there are two, two drugs which we will discuss together this is apraclonidine and Brimonidine have you heard these names somewhere before um, if you haven't it's okay um, it is used primarily in the treatment of glaucoma okay now apraclonidine mm, It can, uh, it is actually non selective, but in some textbooks uh, it says that it leans towards alpha 2 uh, agonist action. And one of the uh, it's important to remember the side effects of these two drugs. Important side effect of apraclonidine is lid retraction. One more you can easily guess is mitriasis. And the third is conjunctival blanching. Now, unlike apraclonidine, brimonidine is half highly selective for alpha 2 and it is uh, also devoid of these side effects. So we of course uh, prefer Brimonidine. Now the next drug which we will be discussing is 
मिथाइल डोपा मिथाइल डोपा इज कॉमनली गिवेन एज ए शॉर्ट नोट इज एक्चुअली अ प्रो ड्रग विच इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू एल्फा मिथाइल नॉर एपिनेफ्रिन दिस इज द एक्टिव फॉर्म नाउ वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट दिस एल्फा मिथाइल नॉर एपिनेफ्रिन it not only has alpha 2 agonistic action it is also a false neurotransmitter okay now what what is the mechanism of action of false neurotransmitter i will be discussing it uh, a bit later but for the time being just take it uh, as i say that false neurotransmitter depletes vesicular stash of norepinephrine and it was earlier preferred in the treatment of pregnancy induced hypertension but uh, not much preferred nowadays of course the drug of choice is oral labetalol again two drugs which we'll be discussing together are guanfacin and guanabens now guanfacin and guanabens can be used in the treatment of ADHD as well additionally guanfacin can be used for the treatment of tics associated with tourettes syndrome this tourette syndrome i want you all to remember the pathophysiology so please uh, go back and search for it in your neuroanatomy books the next drug which which we need to discuss is monoxidine it is an agonist at both alpha 2 receptors and imidazole receptors and is used in the treatment of resistant hypertension in elderly and also for the treatment of neuro athic pain and there is another drug with similar properties and that is rilmenetine r i l m e n i t i n e rilmenetine which is in similar properties now the final alpha 2 agonist which we need to discuss is tza nitin tizanidine is a centrally acting muscle relaxant and is primarily used in the treatment of ALS that is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis again please go back to your physiology textbooks and revise what is amyotrophic amyotrophic lateral sclerosis okay so that's it now uh, these are the alpha 2 agonists in the earlier video i have discussed the alpha 1 agonists and that completes all the agonists uh, in the next po- not completes in the next video we'll be discussing the false neurotransmitters